Right? If you have reoccurring low back pain, uh, repeatedly throwing out your low back or just chronic low back pain, there's a chance you're simply just not bending over properly. I find a lot of people that have low back pain, especially related to bending uh, or just flexing forward, is that they bend at their knees too much. That's actually a misconception that you should bend at your knees because what happens is they bend at their knees, but they still round their low back. All their weight's coming forward and that puts a lot of compression on their low back. The second idea is that they might not be engaging their core. We need to activate our abdominal muscles. The abdominals, especially the side abdominals, act as a brace to support and protect our spine. So I want to talk about both of those and give you some options to bend over properly and give you some options to maybe train how you brace your spine. So let's talk about the first one, bending. Again, if I'm going to uh, lean over and reach to pick something up, a lot of people will do something like this. They might even reach across their body, which is really bad. That flexion of the spine with rotation is one of the worst things that you can do for your low back. So how are you supposed to do it? The idea is to get your hips back. You want to get your hips back because this is going to keep your spine in a more neutral position. It's much more protected in this position. This is difficult for a lot of people. Their brain is wired to naturally bend forward and, and pick things up like this here. So if you notice that this is how you bend over, it is going to take you some training. It might take a week, it might take two weeks. I've had some people that it takes them about three weeks to really get this down. But if you work with what I'm about to show you, it will help and you will start to bend over properly. So the idea, just simply continue to practice getting your hips back. In the beginning, a lot of people don't have the balance and the coordination and they start to come up. Their toes might come up and they feel like they're going to fall backwards. So it's helpful to maybe practice with a wall right behind you. You put a wall behind you, at first, maybe just be out a few inches, and you're going to come straight back and touch your butt to the wall, and you come back forward. And you might do this 10 or 15 times straight back. I say straight back because I don't want you to bend forward. Your first movement should be back. I don't want you to bend straight down. Your movement should be straight back. The down component will come next. Notice how as I keep going back and then I let my legs bend or my knees bend, I naturally go down. So you can get there, but the first movement should be hips back. This is actually called a hip hinge. You're moving at your hips. And again, you will want to practice this until you feel comfortable that you can go back without falling backwards. Each time if you do it with the wall, just step a little further out. Maybe at first you're only six inches out, then maybe you're a foot out, and just keep getting as far out as you can and see how far you can get out like that. Once you feel like you can really get out far, notice again, back is straight, nice and strong, stable. Then you've got it. You want this to be second nature. You want this to be natural. You want it to be instinctive. This is how you should naturally bend for it. So the second idea, is core stability. A lot of people simply don't engage their core when they bend forward. They can have the perfect form, but if their core is not engaged, they can still injure their low back. They're not protected. So how do you engage your core? There are a couple of cues. The first one that I think is the easiest is to purse your lips and just blow out quickly. And if you feel your stomach muscles and blow out, you'll naturally engage. You'll feel everything tighten up. So that's an easy way. And then the idea is to feel that tightness and then try to maintain that and try to hold that tightness. Now you're activating your core. If you do a deep belly laugh, something very funny, you watch a funny movie and you start to laugh, you'll naturally engage your core. So there's another one. There is a misconception that you should bring your navel or your belly button to your spine. Some people like to hollow out that's actually counter to what you want to do. You're going to decrease your stability if you do that. Uh, and I only bring that up because there is a misconception and I have a lot of people that think that that's how they're supposed to engage. That is wrong. You're not fully engaging all of the muscles if you do that. So again, the either that there, a laughter, or the other one I like to think of 
if you're in a karate class and sensei comes up to you and says, Hi-ya! and they are going to hit you in your stomach, your natural instinct is to tighten up. You want to protect yourself and you'll naturally tighten up. You're naturally not going to think about bringing your navel to your spine. That would probably hurt more. But if you bear down and contract, that's going to be good. So those are the two things that you should work on. Those are the most important things when it comes to bending properly. You want good form, spine neutral, spine straight, and that is done by getting your hips back more and engage your core. As always, I've got my contact information in the uh, details below. So if you have any questions, let us know. But hopefully this will help you out. Practice, practice, practice.